Welcome everybody to another edition of the Sun Solar Panel here on YouTube and where you get your fine podcasts. I am your host, well, your temporary host, Greg Esposito. Well, Tim Tompkins is, uh, he's, I don't know, he's, he's probably out wrestling an alligator since he lives in, uh, <laughs> since he lives in Florida. There's always something weird, Tim. Now he's probably buying new glasses. So he is busy today. So you've got myself, Greg Esposito, and always my partner in crime and my, uh, my arch nemesis, Dave King. Dave, how yeah, are you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> something like that. Do we even do that thing that? anymore? No, we, we gave up on that. We're All no right. good at it. All right. I guess we're friends now. So, and, uh, and Dave, why don't you introduce our special guest today? Absolutely. We wanted to know more about Cameron Johnson, our rookie um, who went to University of North Carolina. And so we have asked Jake Lawrence to join us. Jake, uh, you can tell us about yourself a little bit and we'll ask you some questions to establish um, you know, how much you've seen of Cam and all that, but let's, let's get this going. Uh, Jake, tell us about yourself. Hey, appreciate you guys having me on this morning. Uh, I, uh, I've been writing for Tar Heel blog now almost three years or just over three years, uh, about a decade ago, worked in college athletics for, for about four or five years as well, uh, on, on the basketball side. So college basketball has always kind of been my thing and, uh, can definitely say I've watched every game that Cam has played in the past couple of years, uh, at North Carolina. Um, and, uh, you guys are getting a good one in him. So excited to talk about him this morning. That's good. That's good because I've seen about as much college basketball in the last two years as I've seen of daytime soap operas. So <laughs> I need, I need some help on understanding Cam Johnson and his game here. So I got yeah, So, yeah. So tell us, um, uh, obviously, I, I'm looking at Cam's stats. He was in uh, North Carolina for a couple of years after three years at Pitt. I recently, uh, even just recently, uh, realized that he actually graduated from Pitt with an undergrad. And then he went to UNC and got his graduate degree while playing for uh, what, playing for North Carolina. Is that right? Yeah, that's correct. He, got, he did three years at Pitt. He got hurt there. Um, and then uh, Pitt at the time had a guy by the name of Kevin Stallings as their coach. Uh, didn't really go well. Uh, a lot of a lot of turmoil within that program, and so Cam got out of town, came down to North Carolina. Really rare to do a, an interconference or interconference transfer like that, but they made it work, uh, and he ended up giving us two really good years. So he what he did get hurt. He's got he's got uh, hip issues, correct? He did, and uh, that is partly why he kind of shot up the the draft boards this year. Is he had surgery before his final year in Chapel Hill. Uh, on his hit, uh, and he hadn't he hadn't been healthy. He said since high school. So we've been this has been nagging him for years. Got healthy, and then uh, just exploded last year. Uh, over forty five percent from three, almost seventeen points a game. Uh, so the new healthy cam was quite the revelation, uh, and probably a little bit under the radar as far as his future prospects go. So so w w let me ask this: Were you surprised because you, you talked about him? Uh, skyrocketing up the draft board. Were you surprised when his name got called at 11? Did that take you off guard as somebody who's watched so much of Cam Johnson's game? Or did you think, okay, that's that's about right for the talent that I've been watching? So the answer to that is yes. I thought that he was a lottery talent based on his skill set and the way the NBA is trending. But I did not think that a, a team would, would take the gamble on a fifth-year senior because that's usually not the trend in the NBA drafts. So I think his, I think his talent level was right on par uh, within a couple of spots where he was, but I'm surprised that someone actually, in my opinion, actually used some common sense and took someone who's probably going to be able to help out more immediately instead of sit on the bench for four years and learn. Hey, you were probably yeah. really surprised that the common sense came from the Phoenix Suns as well. So <laughs> that was, destination was absolutely a surprise. Yeah. No one saw that one coming. No, apparently uh, the Suns had a private workout with him and all that. And of course, uh, the story has come out about Jeff Bauer originally the he's a vice president of basketball basketball operations with the Suns and he had originally tried to recruit Cam Johnson way back when he was the coach at Marist and Cam didn't end up going there but they've known each other for years it's obviously not the only reason they drafted Cam Johnson but it was a, it was a reason they knew him and uh, knew of his character and all that uh, so tell me uh, just what Cam Johnson is like off the court and and what kind of impression he made on the, um, you know, on the campus and and, and the team and all that. Did, did you get any feel for that? I know you, you don't live in, in, in Chapel Hill, but still, did you get a feel for any of that? 
Oh, no, th- absolutely. There, there's no doubt. And, and the impression he made, and was really a season and a half, because uh, he was uh, he, he had a torn meniscus when he first showed up in North Carolina. So he missed the first couple games of that season. Um, the, the impact he made and, and, and the way the fan base embraced him is unlike anything I've seen short of a freshman phenom. Uh, and it did not take long for him to, to jump in, humble off the court. Uh, as a graduate transfer, it can be sometimes difficult to ingrain yourself on a new team. Uh, and North Carolina is a program that does not take transfers very often. So that was kind of a uh, kind of a wait and see thing that a lot of fans had. But there were zero issues. I and mean, he jumped in. He embraced it, uh, fit the culture. Uh, you are not going to find a better team guy uh, than, than Cam Johnson. And I, I firmly believe that, uh, which is another reason I think it was a really, really good pickup by the Suns for with such a with such a young team that you guys have um you guys are now getting a, a, a young or inexperienced player but mature far beyond his years gonna be a great locker room guy for you every everyone seems to know uh, and basically when they hear Cam Johnson they think three-point shooter right but what about his game is going to surprise Suns fans uh is going to and and NBA fans in general uh that that they may not expect when they think about this young guy I I don't think people realize how tall he really is he, he's pushing 6'9 uh which really helps him uh on, on the boards he averaged almost six rebounds a game last year which was second highest on our team or on North Carolina's team I should say uh, and and his, his situational awareness, uh, once he got healthy, went to another level. Um, and you could see that he was kind of constrained his first couple of years in college. But once he got that hip surgery last year, his situational awareness, his ability to influence the boards on both ends uh, was a surprise. Um, and, and I think that you'll be you're getting more than just a shooter with him in large part because at six, nine, he can influence so many other things. I've heard I've heard um, through like third party, uh, you know, third, fourth hand that he's trying to put on weight because he's thinking potentially that he might end up as a stretch four in the NBA rather than losing weight and trying to fit into the two guard position or something like that. What do you think would be his best uh, pro position? If he can put on the weight, I think a stretch four, because I don't think he has the explosive athleticism or the ball handling skills you need on the wing uh, in the NBA. Uh, but what we saw, I'll give you an example of of why I think that that could work when North Carolina played Virginia last year, uh, they had the lead, Virginia came back strong and then Cam got hurt late in the second half. And he went out when he went out, uh, the, the Cavaliers went to Deandre Hunter and he just attacked nonstop over the next two and a half, three minutes when Cam was in there, that wasn't happening. Um, and so it's, it's may not be a straight apples, apples comparison, but you have another lottery pick. Uh, who uh, plays a similar position, and Cam did a good job of of keeping North Carolina in the game. When he goes out, it was clear he was missed. Uh, so he puts on a little bit of weight. I think that's probably the better bet for him uh, as opposed to playing out as as a two. How is he defensively? Uh, Joseph in the in the live chat uh, is wondering about that. Is on the on that side of the ball, uh, how does he fare? Uh, that's the other reason I say stretch four, because I think he's going to be missing some of that athleticism you need out on the wing, but his length and his positioning, he has a very high basketball IQ. So he understands how to limit his weaknesses and make the most of the strengths. Uh, and there were multiple times last year when, uh, he would show up out of nowhere, either in transition or in help defense and alter a shot or get a piece of the ball. Uh, not a ton to think, oh my God, he's going to be, uh, he's going to be a, a defensive monster, but enough to where he won't be a liability. Uh, and I think with with the rest of y'all's roster, I think that will be uh, enough to to make an impact. Yeah, there's always concern when a player's best season is, you know, his his last one in in college, and he made he took it took him so many years to get there. But if you look back at his stats when he uh, his his third year at Pitt, and this may have been before he got hurt with the hips, um, but his third year at Pitt, he. He started all 33 games and he hit 41% of his threes on 5.7 attempts a game, almost exactly the same as his second year at UNC. And he didn't score quite as much or take take, take quite as many shots, but but basically he was pretty good even in his third year. And then, like you said, they had they had some rough goings with uh, with Kevin Stallings as the coach, and he ended up transferring and all that. Um, so he does have some he has some reasons 
to have needed a few years to 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 be ready and, and be done, you know, all the way through his college career. Um, and he's he's always been an academic guy as well, uh, as shown by the fact that most of these kids come out and and they may have actually shown up to half a dozen classes in college, and yet Cam's got a grad degree already. Um, so uh, it is it is interesting because a lot of people want to compare him to one of those another like I started this with another four year guy who finally got really good in his fourth year and gets drafted high and then can't make it. An example um, that I had thought of on, and and really ties back to the Suns is Frank Kaminsky. Frank Kaminsky had a slow start to his college career. He ended up being incredible in his fourth year. Helped help Wisconsin. Um, in the tournament and all that came out was highly sought after at the in the back half of the lottery ended up going ninth and then he he just doesn't have the athleticism to make it in the NBA even as a stretch four so he's got to really play a lot of five minutes um, so why would I not tell me other other than just Cam's journey let's talk about the athleticism and and the, and the talent why should we think that Cam's going to have a have a better career than someone who did take all those years to get good in college and, and finally did as a, as a senior? No, that's a really good question and a really fair question. Uh, I would argue uh, Cam has the ability to get to the rim better than, than someone like Frank Kaminsky. Um, he has, he has a little bit more athleticism. It's not going to be explosive, but to give you an example, uh, roughly uh, a quarter of his shots last year came at the rim and less than half were actually assisted. So he was getting to the rim by himself whether in transition or finding the gaps in the in the defense and actually getting there and finishing because he hit over 70 percent um, of those shots at the rim but uh, to kind of kind of show you the, the the difference there is uh, then as he goes back his two pointers uh, inside his mid-range game uh, he only if I'm looking at this right yeah 59 percent were assisted um, and he shot 41 percent of those but then you go back to three point and over 90 percent of his three point shots were assisted. So the further he goes back from the rim, the more dependent the Aussie, more dependent he is on catching and shooting. But he showed the ability to get to the rim consistently enough uh, to to kind of open up, uh, open up that uh, that outside game for him. And so he has a little bit more of an inside outside flavor to him uh, than, than someone like Kaminsky did. Uh, and I think that that is probably where uh, where some of those differences lie and kind of give a little bit of variation to his game uh, to where he's not just going to be strictly a, a, a standout on the arc three point shooter. How how are the hips? There's a lot of concern or, uh, uh, about that. And if he if this is going to turn into an injury prone type of guy, did you see it or hear anything in his time at UNC that leads you to believe that, that, that this is the kind of stuff that's going to continue to nag throughout his career? No. Um, once he had that hip surgery before his final year, there were zero indications whatsoever of any lingering effects or any or any bad uh, bad deals going on with his health. I do not think that's going to be a long term effect uh, of Cam Johnson. I think part of that too goes is, you know, in college you have very uh, uneven strength and conditioning programs and philosophies, uh, and. Uh, North Carolina has one of the best uh, college mm-hmm. basketball, and they also are very conservative with injuries. So they were not going to rush him or push him back, and they were going to make everything very specific. And I think that that is something else you will see on the pro level that you don't necessarily get consistently across college games or college programs. Uh, so uh, he gets that on top of what he's already given, which is uh, over about 18 months now of, of no health issues. I would not be concerned about that at all. <clears throat> So he runs, uh, according to basketball reference anyway, he, he runs at 210 pounds. And if he's going to grow himself into a stretch four, which probably is his best. I mean, look, it obviously a guy like a Kyle Korver and a J.J. Raddick, guys like that who are who are smaller than Cam as far as as far as height and not any quicker than Cam on the court can make it as wings who just come in, shoot threes, get by defensively and then. Um, make a difference on on just their shooting, but if Cam wants to be a uh, a high minutes player, I really think he's gonna at this point. I think he's gonna have to grow into a stretch four role. Looking at his body type and the way he does, it look like he could add that kind of weight to to be able to hold up down low. That's a really good question, and one I don't know the answer to. I don't know if his frame could handle another twenty pounds that he would need ish. 
uh, to, 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 hand, to to bang down there and, and how Phoenix would, would be looking to use him. So that's probably one of the biggest unknowns is can his body take the extra weight and can he put it on? Um, I don't have an answer for that one. And I think yeah. that's a valid concern. Or valid. Well, yeah. And the Suns, I mean, the Suns really, they played uh, several guys last year. They had no forwards, no power forwards on the team. They played several guys last year who were in the 200 to 210 range. So I'm not saying you couldn't do it now. Um, I just am curious how that's going to go. Um, I Frankly, I see him just coming out in, and just shooting in the rotation, and then whatever happens, happens while he's out there. And sometimes he'll be against fours, and sometimes he'll be trying to hold up on the island against twos and threes. And Dave, to be fair, the uh, the 210-pound guys that play power forward didn't play it well, so let's keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying the Suns wouldn't be afraid to put him there. He might suck at it. But <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I – has does Cam have any nickname? The, the live chat's asking. Does Cam have any nicknames? Uh, fans, I get obsessed with these little things. Is there any bizarre nickname? Any interesting nickname that Cam had in his time at, at Carolina? None that come to mind. No, he was, I and mean, we just knew him as Cam. That was it. <laughs> uh, it's pretty bland, but that's who he was. Hey, as long yeah. as he hits forty-five percent of his threes, I don't care <laughs> if he doesn't have a nickname, right? Yeah. Um, you know, it's, it's funny because nicknames are tough to come up with. I mean, some players come up with their own nicknames and they're awful. And some, some guys just get given nicknames. We just found out this week that apparently Ty Jerome, the, the other rookie, the, the guard from Virginia, the other rookie for the Suns, he didn't even know. He, he apparently had a nickname of Milk. <laughs> I had no idea. Never Dating that back either. to, I guess, I guess it was a, uh, obscure uh, dating back to um, in in an AAU tournament or something like that, where he was the only white guy on the court. Oh, so they started yeah, calling him sense. Mills. And now uh, Kelly Oubre Jr., um, one of the Suns players, is like, now we can't call him Milk, but we'll call him Milky. <laughs> so maybe Cam doesn't want a nickname. <laughs> At least not one Kelly Oubre gives out. Uh, <laughs> Cam will be very happy just going out in the court and doing his thing. Yeah, he's not going to be seeking uh, any nicknames from from teammates. <laughs> he seems a little more mature than most of the players that have come through Phoenix in the last few years. So <laughs> maybe that's why we're all so um, un, you know um, worried about what's going to happen here is because we're not used to a player like Cam Johnson. Yeah, and, and honestly, guys like Cam are rare. Um, and I know Phoenix has you guys had a revolving door of personalities and, of and players. <laughs> so uh, he, he will be a different change of pace. But I have to think that that's, as we talked about earlier, that's probably a large reason why he was brought in as well to help uh, yeah. calm some of those some of those personalities. Yeah. yeah, there was a ton of turnover over the summer. Um, the basically yes, they. The Suns were trying to get by on huge athleticism with very little basketball skill and hoping they would grow into those basketball skills. And almost nobody did except Devin Booker. <laughs> um, and so now this summer, they basically wiped the slate clean besides Devin Booker and Mikel Bridges, who was another guy like a Cam Johnson who developed throughout his career. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and both of those guys are actually older than – than Devin Booker is still, even though Devin's entering his fifth season in the NBA. Yeah. That's pretty, pretty scary. Actually, you know, like Devin Booker's two months older than Mikel, but he's a year, he's, he's a little younger than Cam Johnson. So, and, and then the rest of the roster now is guys who uh, recently were in the playoffs, but they're still early in their careers with the only exception being Aaron Baines, who just needs to teach DeAndre Aiden how to throw a pick and, and, and take some, take some hits in the paint and all that. Um, but yeah, it'll be a totally different team. We're not used to in Phoenix of not super athletic, but pretty smart. And, and so Cam, I think will fit in there. Now the question is, did they get rid of too much athleticism and Cam doesn't help on that end? Neither does Ty Jerome. No, no, it is not. But what, what we haven't discussed either. And we kind of, I kind of talked around it was Cam's efficiency was off the charts as well. Um, over, over th uh, his plus minus overall efficiency was over 30, which uh, for a guard, uh, it's especially North Carolina system is almost unheard of. Uh, and uh, his, his, uh, his effective field goal uh, percentage uh, was <laughs> over 62 percent. So um, what he what he lacks up and it goes to kind of his IQ. He knows exactly when and where he reads screens. He reads the other players. So if you're having issues with your big men given screens. Uh, 
put Cam on there, and Cam will make the right read that you need and, and find himself open. So there was another UNC guy that was tied to the Suns with the, the original pick that they had, that number six pick before they traded back. Uh, do you think that the Suns made a mistake in not staying put and taking Kobe White uh, at, at and, and helping address that long-term point guard need? Or do you think that this was a, a smart move for them to move back, get a Cam Johnson, uh, add another piece, and, and get a veteran point guard rather than trying to build everything around, uh, around Kobe? I think the way to answer that is what would the plan be for Kobe and Devin Booker at the same time? And were you going to have too much of the same kind of player uh, or – um, were you going to be able to to help build around Kobe for a couple of years? Because I think Kobe's going to be a star. Uh, he he just has an ability to to do whatever he wants whenever he wants on the court, but uh, and and that will amplify as he grows. Uh, but I don't know if it would have been the right fit at Phoenix with your current parts, uh, and I think that's the that's what has to be decided or or the opinion that has to be made. Uh, when it comes to to passing on Kobe. Do you see Kobe as more of a two guard that can pass than a point guard that can shoot? Personally, I do. I know there are people that disagree with me, but I did not see enough of the facilitated, the the, the organic natural facilitating from Kobe. Um, A lot of it came from within the system and just the fact that North Carolina played so fast that the opportunities were there. Um, I I see him more as as an off the ball passer as opposed to a, a, a point guard. All right, so I have uh, I have another question here for you, and this is probably the most serious one I'm going to ask you all show. Is Carolina ready to apologize to Phoenix for Kendall Marshall? <laughs> um, no, we will never apologize for our players. So any, any decisions that Phoenix Sun, the Phoenix Suns made are, are on them to own. <laughs> yeah, the last, Fair the last um, uh, not super athletic Tar Heel. <laughs> I think we were yeah, all. Yeah. I think we were all scared we were going to get a reverse Kendall Marshall with Kobe White, and and that's why we went. Ah, oh, we're all right with trading back and taking Cam Johnson. <laughs> I will. I, I will say. I think in, in Kendall's defense, I just think he hit the NBA at the wrong time, about a decade too late for what his skill set was. Um, and he was just kind of he was there as the NBA was changing, and then he had some injuries. But uh, I would understand the Suns fans' trepidation for taking another UNC point guard after that. He was always very nice. I, I can't speak poorly of, of Kendall Marshall, the person, but uh, Kendall Marshall, the basketball player, left a, a little to de- be desired here in Phoenix for sure. Fully understood. <laughs> All right, Greg, you got any more questions? I just is there anything when you're when you're looking at Cam Johnson and how his game's going to translate coming into the NBA that that you go I I'm not sure he can crack a rotation at this point. I mean, unlike a lot of these guys that come in early, it shouldn't be a maturity problem. It shouldn't be uh, a a hasn't played enough minutes kind of problem, but what do you think could potentially keep Cam Johnson from cracking the Suns rotation this year? This year, I think it would be um, what position he actually fits on at his current size. Uh, And I just think that if the Suns try to force him to play down low too early, uh, that may be a liability. If, if they give him too much freedom on the, on the perimeter, that may turn into a liability. I just think he's going to need some time to figure out where his position is. Uh, and that might take a season uh, for him to get comfortable. But uh, I, I think that if you're looking for an immediate impact, um, there's optimism, but it should be uh, it should be managed accordingly uh, until they find out where he actually fits on the court. Makes sense. Well, I want to, Jake, is there anything you want to plug, anything you want to have uh, Suns fans know about where they can catch your stuff uh, and any other uh, questions where they could hit you up about Cam Johnson? Yeah, if they, if they have any questions, they can go ahead and uh, I write for TarHillBlog.com. Not the uh, most original name, but it's what we got. Uh, <laughs> or, uh, or I'm on Twitter at, uh, at the realist RJL, And uh, my, my Twitter handle is at the top of my articles. So uh, I get a couple out a week on the, on, on the site. They can come search for me and uh, hit me up there. Perfect. So I want to thank everybody for watching on the YouTube stream, listening, uh, wherever you get your fine podcasts. Uh, you can follow Dave King on Twitter at Dave King NBA. You can always read him at Brightside uh, of the Sun. I am Greg Esposito. You can hit me up at Espo on Twitter, and you can find the show 
on iTunes, Google Play, wherever uh, you want to listen. You can also hit that subscribe button on YouTube. It helps. And if you'd like to uh, make a donation to the show, you can sign up and make a $1, $5, or $10 Uh, donation to the show, a monthly donation or a one-time donation. Just click the link in the bio of uh, either the podcast or the uh, iTunes description below. So for Dave King, for Jake, for myself, I'm Greg Esposito. We'll talk to you next time here on the Sun Solar Panel.